What is up y'all? It's the homie Koru. What to do? Back with another video. We are working our way through the Kybalion and today we are going to cover the Law of Rhythm. So, the Law of Rhythm. Basically, everything flows in and out. Uh, the last the last law was the law of polarity, which basically established that for one thing, there's always another side to it. There's always another polarity of it. Um, and in the law of rhythm, we're basically saying that everything is flowing between these two poles. Everything goes in and comes out. Everything, the pendulum swings. It's always swinging back and forth between these two poles. And so rhythm manifests on the two poles established by the law of polarity. So rhythm very rarely touches the extremes and it's also very difficult to try to establish what extremes of each pole would be but uh for example breath would be the perfect example of the law of rhythm we breathe in we breathe out and when we breathe out there's only th the only thing else to do is breathe in and vice versa and so um birth growth death and rebirth are all examples of this you can think of the water cycle going through its rhythms and through you know its various phases you could think of people going through their various phases of their life um and and through their day and everything and um night follows day day follows night these are the two rhythms that we come into the height of summer as goes back and swings back to the dead of winter and and vice versa so we're always following these rhythms and um, it manifests inside of us too um, as moods and phases and feelings and it's important to be mindful of when these rhythms happen um, if you were just starting out with this principle I get like I would say try to focus on the rhythm like can you observe the rhythm happening and um, they're they're natural it's a very natural part of life this this world is polar and because it's polar it's going in between um these two poles um so <clears throat> um it's just one of those things about life and um but the point of hermeticism would be to rise above these poles and rise above this vibration um and doing that through your power of will in order to rise above the natural swing and so like that would be well after you've gotten comfortable with observing how the rhythms work and how they go from side to side um and if you do get to that point above everything it would basically be like you'd be standing on a bridge and you'd have everything flowing beneath you you wouldn't be moving you wouldn't be affected by these rhythms but the rhythms would still be happening um and you could still be aware of them but you wouldn't be affected by them um and basically like some examples of this like humans are very much creatures of rhythm and an example of that would be like have you ever had a a, a period of a very large high and an, an enthusiastic peak just so enthusiastic and then yet afterwards eventually you fall back down into a depression you know if you're if you're being courageous, if you have a feeling of courage, inevitably it could be followed by fear on the other end. Um, but they say that the law of compensation, it's kind of like the law of compensation is kind of like a sub law of the law of rhythm. But basically it's just saying that like, yeah, everything's following this rhythm, but each side of the rhythm is compensated. They're, they're equivalent. So the swing to the right is equal to the swing to the left and um, they counterbalance each other. Um, and so in a sense, you know, at least what the law postulates, and I, I would agree and say that this is completely true, but if you're incapable of feeling pain, then you're also incapable of feeling joy. And if you're, if you're able to feel some pain, but you know, nothing really hurts that bad, well, maybe you don't get that um, much pleasure either. You know, maybe you're capped out on the other side. Um, and if you enjoy a lot, the more you breathe deep into life and really like d breathe deep into the pleasures of life, well, then maybe you're also subject to the deep depressions of life and to the, to the deep feelings and the darkness of life. Um, and it, it, the law of compensation affects our lives everywhere. It affects it physically, of course, um, and it affects us mentally, emotionally. Um, and so one another example of this with the law of uh, compensation is that, you know, for example, everything that you have in your life 
there's something that you don't have. There's an equivalent thing that you also don't have. And by having one thing, it's it's mandated by the law of rhythm and everything that there is something that you don't have. For example, like say, say there's somebody wealthy. Maybe they can afford lavish food, luxurious food, right? But maybe they don't have the capacity to fully enjoy that food. Whereas compared to a day laborer who gets out and does physical work and and works very hard, but lives a very simple life, you know, maybe um, at the end of the day, he's so ready for his food. He might have simple food. He might have very basic food, but he might enjoy it way, way more than uh, somebody wealthy would who doesn't understand or have the capacity to have the pleasure for that type of meal after that long day's hard work. And it's just a very basic example, feel free to poke holes in it, but it basically is meant to illustrate that if you have something, there's something you don't have. And if you don't have something, there is also something you do have. And that this law of compensation that wherever we are on this polarity, it goes both ways. And the swing on one side is equal to the swing on the other side. And the main thing about this, if if that was it for the law of pol uh, uh, not polarity rhythm, then that would completely make sense. But it cannot be um, go without being stated that one again with the laws of hermeticism, the whole point would be to raise your vibration past this plane into a higher plane of consciousness. Um, while you're alive, yeah, I mean, so basically the idea would be that you would take your consciousness and rise it above the normal baser sense of consciousness to um, become above these natural rhythms that happen. And so when something goes good, you're, you're neutral, you know what's happening. When something goes bad, you're still neutral, you know what's happening. It's, it puts you into a place where you can observe these rhythms and work with these rhythms and maybe even apply a bit of counterbalance to some rhythms, but you're not taken by the rhythms and washed away with every rhythm that happens in life. Which would be the worst thing, of course, because it's just life and it's just natural. But if you are trying to understand mentalism, hermeticism, magic, then it would um, be an excellent um, idea to try to raise your vibration um, up to this higher plane of uh, consciousness. If you're ready, if you want to, you know, maybe uh, you're on the swing that d doesn't want to or would think that would be stupid. And, you know, there's another swing on the other side somewhere. So, um, but yeah, the law of rhythm, everything flows in and out. If it's, something's flowing one way, it will eventually flow the other way. And uh, I'm sure it would be very easy for you to meditate on this for a minute and just start to think about some things where hey well you know maybe everybody's doing this right now it's like well eventually that's going to swing the other way or maybe everything's going amazing right now don't they say oh everything's amazing then it'll it, that means something's wrong something bad's going to happen it's like well maybe there's actually a law that goes along with that <laughs> when things are following this natural base or rhythm that happens in this plane but um and i think that this is th thinking about getting to that higher plane of consciousness as well makes me think of kind of the whole point of hermeticism as well at its core, which is saying that we're not just subject to this world. We are in this world, which is kind of like the all, everything is within the all, but the all is within all. It's like we're, we are spirits. We are points of consciousness. We are beings of light and we are having a human experience, right? Um, and if we are fully immersed into the human experience, we're going to be, um, a wash with all of the rhythms of life but if we can take up that mantle of our higher selves and our higher consciousness then we can escape these rhythms that wash everyone else away and who knows maybe if event eventually enough people become aware of these principles and aware of you know our higher nature we could all start to escape these um these rhythms um, going back and forth and maybe we could sit by and enjoy watching them happen instead of <laughs> being so affected by them. Um, so that's it for that one. Um, we've got, after this one, we've got two more laws left. Um, so the plan, the rough plan would be, we're gonna cover those two laws, probably each a video for those, and then maybe do a video on a recap, kind of after going over the whole thing and like here's everything and then i'm going to splice all those together and make a one long video with all of the um 
laws together and um, so then you can go through all of them instead of having to go one by one um, but appreciate everyone for tuning in don't let the rhythm sweep you away too hard whatever is going on in your life and uh, catch you on the next one guys